In this video, we're gonna be looking at the Pro 3 from Dave Smith Instruments and do a little patch programming and then make a quick, super fast beat in Ableton Live. Let's get to it. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Stefty. Today we're looking at the Pro 3 from Dave Smith Instruments. It came out earlier this year in 2020. It's a it's a badass synth. I like it a lot. I got it a few months ago. I've been using it for a few things here and there. Did use it on one kind of jam video with an iPad a while ago. And it's just, it's, it's an awesome synth. I really like it. So today we're gonna be doing some patch building because uh, I haven't really done that in a video yet. And I just kind of want to discover things on my own. I've actually only built a few patches personally so far. So this video is kind of like for me to also dig into more patch building and just see what happens. I'm not going to dig into the CV ins and outs. I know that is a cool feature, but technically right now this already has enough juice in it that I'm gonna be utilizing its tools that are already in the, uh, in, the, in the system. So a quick overview also, it is a three oscillator paraphonic synth and with the new OS 1.1, it's actually duophonic as well. So you have monophonic, paraphonic and duophonic. If you don't know what paraphonic means, it's basically all three of these uh, oscillators can play a different pitch at the same time, but they're gonna be sharing the same filter, uh, envelopes, all that stuff. Those will be shared. They won't be individual per voice but per oscillator, you can have different pitches on there. And with the new duophonic mode, they made it so you can play both oscillator one and two with different pitches and oscillator three can become an LFO, I believe. I personally have not even touched that feature yet. We might jump into it this video, not really sure, but we're gonna make some patches. All right, so I got some headphones on. I'm ready to dive in to the Pro 3. So it comes with eight banks. You have four user banks and uh, four factory banks. As you can see right here, user bank one, two, three, four, and then you have factory five, six, seven, eight. I believe it's just copied one to one when you first get the system. So if we wanna make some new patches, just go over to uh, user bank one and start checking out. So old saw is one of the, the first patches that loads up. One thing that I really like is the feel of the synth. It has this like, this rubber band type of just bounce to it. Obviously it has a specific characteristic and DSI is known for making very uh, vibey synths from the Prophet 6 to the OB6. You can hear that there's a uniqueness to Dave Smith Instruments. So let's get an in and patch. Uh, what you do is you go to global. They changed this with 1.1. So now you have a commands tab over here. Before it was like one long list, which was odd. So yeah, they gave a commands tab right here and they have basic program. And in order to activate that, you hit right, I believe. Basic program, let's go. Quick note on routing, I have the left and right output going into my Mackie board, which is a 1640 Onyx 16 channel board. And then those direct outs are going into my Motu interface, which is what you guys are hearing. What should we make first? I think something simple, like, uh, like a bass, usually a bass or a lead. They end up kind of being very similar when I end up making them because if I make a bass sound, I usually want to ride the filter cut off to give it some bite, which could also end up being a lead at times. So let's start with something like that. So let's open up the filter. Let's start messing with the shape. Actually, let's go uh, just one oscillator. So we're going to turn. All right, that's already down. Got a nice like bright cut to it. Yeah, let's make a bass. So if we add like a couple octave up, let's turn this oscillator down. And then, you know what? Let's turn oscillator one down and check out the shape sound of this. I kind of like the triangle sound. I'd say LFO the shape on number two. In fact, let's do that. So there's a lot of modulation options in this synth. Uh, there's like three dedicated LFOs to begin with, and then I believe you can dig in and find other stuff as well. So if you hold show and press anything on the keyboard, it'll then bring up its menu if you don't want to change it. So for instance, let's say you have the filter cut off somewhere that you don't want to mess with and you just want to see the menu show up in there. You hold show and then mess with this and it pops up the thing so you can see what's going on. Like if you want to see the distortion currently for this patch, you hold show, then you move it and it'll pop it up in there. 
I'd say it's pretty self-explanatory, but somebody might be like, how do I see the thing without messing with the stuff? And it's, it's a pretty easy way to do it. Uh, overall, this is an extremely well laid out keyboard. I like the routings very much so. It's just, it feels great. I also really appreciate the filter knob is big. I'm a big fan of having a big giant filter knob. <laughs> for my sense. We want to make oscillator two shape get hit with an LFO. So I guess we'll take LFO one. We can change up the shape too. Sample and hold. I guess we'll stick with like a triangle type of thing. Destination, I believe you just hold destination and then you twist it. Yeah, destination oscillator two shape. And that is how easy it is to make an LFO connection on the keyboard. Now I'm gonna adjust the amount. <laughs> And that is uh, too quick, but you can hear the difference. So that is already working. Awesome. Now let's open up the filter again. Shape mod. So I want the same, I want another LFO right there as well. So we'll go to LFO two. Uh, let's go increase on that. Destination is going to be the shape mod. Right. That's 79. Let's uh, slow this down. Oscillator. Let's slow down LFO one frequency. Back to the LFO two. Cool. I like that. Let's drop the pitches of this. Cool, we got some like uh, interesting harmonic content going right there. Let's actually turn down both these oscillators and hear the digital oscillator. Cool, so shape on this is basically a wavetable. So I can go like regular basic shapes then all the way over to sequential. And what's new in 1.1 as well is you can load up your own wavetables I think there's 32 slots that you can do that with. I have not done that. I don't plan on doing that with this video. So if you're looking for that, uh, sorry. <laughs> but it's it's cool. It's, it's a nice little expansion to be able to add some more harmonic content into your patches. Let's actually find something. What's uh, quad square? Mm, that's nice. Let's uh, drop the octave. I like that a lot. Now here's something that I don't know. If I hold destination and mess with this shape mod, will it replace oscillator two's desti uh, or oscillator two shape mod, which was the destination list? Let's find out. We'll go like that, which is sounding freaking crazy. Now, if I go show and then modulation sources, it tells me modulation one, two. As you can see, there is a bunch of modulation matrix destinations. So you're definitely not limited in your options on there. What you will be limited in is if you need more LFOs and that type of thing. So you have to be creative with that or do some auxiliary envelopes and that type of thing. Or what you could do is patch in some additional LFOs into your CVNs. So if you have modular gear, just load up some LFOs that way. So we got sort by source, LFO one, two, and three. And as you can see, fixed modulation, it looks like it did override it. So this is a one-to-one -one type of thing. You can't actually send it to multiple destinations. So if I go like this and send it back to this, or send it back to os oscillator two shape mod, and then go back to showing destinations, you can see now it's oscillator two. So in order to additionally throw that in there, what we gotta do is go to sort slot, we need um, modulation slot three. The source is going to be LFO two, because that's what's right here. And then the destination is going to be oscillator three. Oscillator three shape mod. Perfect. And then we can adjust a little bit. So now let's bring in oscillator two. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> that's working. All right, so that's all three oscillators in there. We haven't done anything with the amplitude envelope yet, and we've barely touched the uh, the filter yet. So we should do some stuff with that. We also have uh, LFO three still available. Let's try to get some character into the filter. So we got the four pole o OTA, we've got four pole ladder, and then we got two pole uh, OTA state variable. Let's work with the two pole state filter initially because you can do some stuff with this. You also make it make a band pass. Which I do find really cool. Let's have drive. Let's crank the drive. No drive. You get like a little bit, a little bit of a fattening effect. In fact, let's hear the distortion in this keyboard. Pretty good distortion. <laughs> it's very mid to mid high bite in there. I'm a fan of low mid type of distortion that gets a, a little more aggressive the harder you push it. Um, so that feels more like a straight up distortion unit, which is cool. It's really nice. I, I love like analog distortion type of effects in the keyboards, and I'm pretty sure that's analog. I I could be wrong. Be a little weird if it wasn't analog since there's so much analog stuff already in here. But I'm pretty sure that distortion effect is analog because uh, you do have digital effects in the keyboard as well. And you also have this tuned feedback type of stuff, which is, uh, I'll be honest, I don't fully understand. <laughs> I know it makes really cool sounds. So like, let's go grunge. Crazy. A lot of crazy stuff, a lot of options when it comes to distortion and stuff in here to make it real um, aggressive and bitey, which is definitely one of the cool characteristics about the Pro 3. All right, back to the filter. We want to make something with some character. So we got the drive cranked up. We have no resonance right now. And we took off the band pass. We should definitely throw oscillator uh, LFO 3 into the state variable right here. Because what's going on right now is it's acting like a low pass filter. You can modulate that bad boy into going between a band pass and a high pass, which could be a little too crazy initially. Actually, you know what would be cool? Have a envelope do that. So initially, it would be like low pass and then slide up into band pass, high pass, and then back down. I think we should do that. So let's use auxiliary one. We're going to have a long attack and a long decay, we're gonna have no sustain or release because we don't want the note to hang somewhere in the upper echelon of that. We want it to happen as you play it and then go back down to a bass sound. Now, what I don't know, because I haven't done this yet, is do I hold source on modulation? Yes, envelope one, envelope auxiliary one, perfect. Now, I hold destination state variable. There it is. That's how easy it is to make some modulation sources. Awesome. <laughs> now I just have to adjust the amount, uh, which actually I think I can do with this, right? Are these two separate amounts? These are two separate amounts. Okay. So you have an amount on the actual envelope, and then you have to adjust how much amount you want on here. This might be hardwired into something, the auxiliary envelope. I don't know what. What I can do is go like this. it going that's very long so the attack is pretty damn long uh, also you know let's just crank up the amount so that's maxed out and then we'll just adjust it in the matrix right here so we'll bring this back down to like say 40 and let's actually bring this down to we'll bring up the resonance Cool, so that decay is way too quick. Still too quick.
Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. A nice slow progression off of that. Uh, but I think the attack should be a bit quicker. And I think we should probably turn down the effect a bit. Cool. I also think the amount of this... Yeah, that pulsing is a little intense. Also, the frequency is a little intense, too. There we go, a little more mellow. I haven't even messed with the external audio. This has like a whole slew of things that you can do with external audio. Again, with the CV, ins and outs, and external audio. Huge amount of sonic potential in this that I have barely scratched the surface on. Just how it is. There's only so many hours in the day, right? I think right about now would be the perfect time to hit the like button and sub to the channel. Okay, that's too much noise. Let's bring the noise down. We just want a little, little bit of grit. Maybe what we should do is throw actual distortion on. Yeah. So far, I'm really digging this. Uh, we need to adjust the amplitude, though. So it's got zero, zero attack. Maybe let's just give it a little bit of attack, so in case there's any clickety stuff in there. Sometimes these envelopes can be super sharp and just create like weird like audio rate clicks that can happen. Let's make the decay. Let's drop the sustain down. Bring out the decay. And let's uh, give it some release. and max out that amount. Cool. Let's bring up oscillator one volume a bit. Maybe even bring this down to the bass range. Yeah, you know what? We should sweep back and forth between this shape in uh, LFO3. So let's bring this frequency way down. Let's keep the amount cranked. Uh, let's go destination, the oscillator one mod, shape mod. I think it needs more. Cool, this is sounding like a nice, fat, dirty bass already. I am definitely digging it. Can I actually write? Writing to bank one, program one, overriding old saw, hit write. We're gonna write it, we're calling it basic program. Cool, so we actually have this now officially written to the memory. We haven't put any effects on there though, and I think effect two is the only one with reverb. Not that I want a fat reverb on a bass, but just letting you guys know. Yeah, rotating speaker, ring mod, HP filter. So we get the stereo delay. Let's throw a chorus on here. Let's throw 100% on the mix. Parameters, let's go depth. So we got rate, which we can make crazy if we want. And then the depth. Okay, I'm actually liking that chorus. The, the chorus is working out. Okay, so this is a delay, which might be a little too much. Oops. Uh, let's see, feedback. Let's turn the feedback down. We could sync it as well. Sync frequency. Let's go quarter notes. We definitely need to bring out, get rid of some top end. I wish the delay had a band pass. I'm, for me, I like delays with band passes just because I like to tighten up the frequency range. Sometimes you get too much mud in the bass. Now it's a lead. <laughs> I'm actually really digging this patch. Some 
bit much on the mix, so let's turn it down. If I was actually recording this into Ableton, I'd probably like take off the effect. I'd probably keep the chorus though. Cool. So that's awesome. I'm digging how that's sounding. And we got a moderate amount of distortion going on. We use, we didn't use a filter envelope. Maybe we should do that actually. Cause we got auxiliary one envelope adjusting the state variable. Let's try it. Yeah, give it a bit of an attack now, which is actually kind of cool. Let's have like nothing on there. Let's jack up the amount. Getting close to sounding like a pluck now. But what we're gonna do, we just want a little bit of that. Maybe add some sustain. So that's none of it. to the resonance. Let's turn down the resonance. I feel like the touch should do resonance and filter. I think that would be cool. Let's go to the ma modulation matrix. So we have slider right here. Slider is also controlling cutoff already, it's at 64. So these patches come pre-baked with slider activity, which adjusts the cutoff, and then uh, mod wheel, which adjusts LFO one amount. So let's adjust uh, the resonance now. So destination resonance. Let's bring this resonance in like 40, go back to destination and crank that up to maybe 64. down a bit. Cool. Overall, digging that. What we could do is throw in a little detune. Like, let's detune oscillator one, negative five. Oscillator two will go plus four, maybe. And then oscillator three will go negative two. It's got a lot of harmonic content, so it'd be kind of these, one of these things where the bass is definitely gonna stick out a bit. It's not gonna be like a fundamental support bass, it's gonna be a character bass. And speaking of character type bases, what goes really good with character bases is a sequence. What comes pre-installed? Fascinating. <laughs> Set that. Here's a race track. Hit sequence step button to erase sequence. Or hit ABC to erase full sequence. Okay, there we go. So you hold track select and then erase track right here. And then you choose which one you want to erase. So I believe these are all erased now. Yeah, they are. Great. Now, if I'm in record mode, yeah, now we'll do single step recording. So let's go dun 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 dun. Yeah? Why did this one? This G had nothing on there. Okay, so track select note uh, velocity. 
screen with the volume in it. Let's hear this. Interesting. Let's uh, slow down the tempo. Yeah, let's go like 70 BPM. Give it some swing. I think that's pretty cool. All right, let's go back to this. Uh, you know, we should add some glide. Yeah, let's go some individual glides. Yeah, that's better. And then now let's go back to recording these notes. Okay. that. Way too much. One more time. Take off the delay. Delay back on. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. I dig it. I don't know if I'll ever use this patch for anything, but it's just fun to make patches. All right, so we made a dirty base type of thing. Maybe it's time to make something that's like, uh, maybe you use something for that dual phonic or maybe paraphonic. So let's go to a new patch. So if we go over one, this is old saw again, also basic program. Which sounds like what we made. Here's old saw. And then back to old saw has a nice round bass sound to it. This is more like a classic bass. Um, but we're going to use this. So commands, right, basic program. And again, old saw is also in here. So if I ever need it, I can always copy that back over there. So in order to make something paraphonic, you just click paraphonic and you're good to go. Uh, if you made a brand new patch, I believe only oscillator one is playing. So you have to turn these up. Let's just go 60, something like that. So now it's each one of these is a different oscillator or one of the three oscillators. So what's cool about that is you can then change the, the shapes to be all, to rotate. And then you also play all three of them. Cool, what should we make? I think maybe something plucky sounding. So in order to make a pluck, we need a pretty sharp attack. We need a quick decay. Uh, we'll, we'll get rid of sustain. We'll, we'll have a little sustain and some release. Quick decay. Yeah, something like that. Let's crank the drive again. I always like the drive. <laughs> We're already sounding a little plucky. We'll do four pole ladder on this one. Give it some resonance too. Uh, 
Let's also make this velocity sensitive too. Let's crank this all the way up. And same thing with the filter. Now the filter, we're gonna boost that all the way up for the amount of the filter envelope. Can make the attack sh real quick and the decay also quick. Cool, we dropped the, the, the cutoff frequency. Got some flavor going on there. We should probably do some shape modulations. Actually, let's go uh, LFO1. I'm gonna drop that frequency down so it's pretty slow. I'm gonna crank the amount and we're gonna send it over to the filter cutoff. Yeah. Maybe too much. It's really cool though. Let's increase the decay on the amplitude. I think we have too much filter envelope. Okay, so we want it right there. Now let's increase this. See, it sounds like it's going under. Now, there's probably a way to set that up in here. I'm just not really sure to prevent it from going uh, negative. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's a way to prevent it from going negative on the LFO. Maybe you know. Leave me, leave me a comment. We have a interesting sounding pluck thing going on here. Now it's paraphonic. So paraphonic means it's sharing the same envelopes that's going on there, which I believe is creating a phantom delay sound because the, uh, the amplitude and the filter is being brought up and brought down pretty quick, but it's also then being re-triggered. So it's still hearing the other note. So it's creating this phantom to delay. Really cool. Again, there's no effects on there right now. This is just the oscillators and the envelopes. So you could do something like personally liked it a lot. <laughs> let's get let's add some effects to it. So we could do a delay. Flanger maybe? Ooh, phaser. Spread that stereo image. Yeah, that's kind of kind of like a chorus. Let's go to super plate. So this is the reverb. Well, this patch actually works out pretty well. So we got time. That's maxed out time. Sounds like it's infinite or close to. Definitely not infinite, but it's close. Like some 20, 30 second delay. Let's turn this down to say 169. Cool, now tone. Tone's brightening it or making it darker. I personally like dark reverbs, so they don't just jump out at me. It's quite a bit of pre-delay. Let's drop that down to zero. should dial back the mix in this. So it's like a little bit. It's a little wet. I 
I would totally use this in a pan uh, in a song. We're gonna save this real quick because I'm digging it. Let's turn up the glide rate. More. Oh, the glide wasn't on. <laughs> Whoops. There it is. I was like, I'm not really hearing the glide. Oh yeah, that is way obvious now. Let's give us some distortion. Not a fan of the distortion on this batch. What about the tuned grunge feedback? Let's see what the sequencer sounds like. It's super happy and bubbly. Let's record something else. Let's do a basic arpeggio. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Well, I like this patch. I would totally use it in something. Basic program number two. <laughs> All right, so I think what we should do is go into Ableton and make a quick little something with these two patches that we, that we have crafted. So I'm just going to go and get like a basic uh, drum loop here that we can work with. Samples, loops, let's go with the hip hop beat. Mmm, something like that. So let's throw MIDI. I'm gonna like I'm gonna record MIDI on here because I'd like to uh, quantize a little bit. <laughs> so let's do grab a little quantization. Let's have a look at that. Great. Eight bars. Grab my quantize settings. I always like to do a little bit. Okay. Output Pro 3. Yeah, that kind of works. That kind of works. Let's uh, record that now. I have all my inputs here on Ableton, so I can just grab whatever as I go. Uh, I usually have this board patched into 13, 14. Sometimes I switch it in and out because I have a, a fairly modular hybrid system. So we're going to grab this. We'll start out with the low. You know what? I'm going to get rid of that delay. Because we'll add a delay later on. Let's delete that. Mm -hmm. 
that works for me. I'm gonna turn that down as well. Also turn off the Pro 3. I'm gonna throw like a little uh, compression on there real quick. I'm also gonna throw Fab Filter on and juice the bass a bit. Get rid of some top end just a little bit. Yeah, this top end's a bit harsh. Yeah, let's just do something like that for now. <laughs> Let's throw an echo on there. This echo is going to be relatively subtle. Add a little wobble in there. And we're going to, see this is what I always want to do when it comes to filters. I always want to roll off that low end, roll off some high end, have some little peaky parts in like the 1K range. That's got some nice space, some imagery and all that. Now let's go to the pluck. Super basic, let's roll with it. I'm gonna record this. Do a little quantize. make this like red 13 14 same thing now this one I want to definitely want to ride some character on the filter cutoff I just remembered that on the base the touch had resonance in there I totally didn't use that bummer all right, we're gonna take like the last four of these. Put some of that dark hall on there. Cool, so that's something. Want some sort of like additional harmonic support with it. I'm not really sure what. I guess I could just try something. It's pretty basic, but I guess it works. Keep it real simple. Let's record that. That works. I feel like after a half hour, I'd get sick of that and have to change it immediately. Uh, I think I need to end the video right here, guys. I could go on for another hour and make a full-on beat with this stuff. In fact, maybe a future video will be making a track completely off the Pro 3 with various patches and stuff that comes out of there. And memes and I can do some work on like an actual song. That could be a possibility. Also, maybe something with the CVs in, in and out. Um, if you guys have any questions or things that you'd like to see on the channel, whether it's this synthesizer or other synths that we have, uh, or other like production stuff and processes, we'd love to hear it. Definitely let me know in the comments. I'm always down to make, uh, make stuff like it's awesome and super fun. So thank you very much for watching. That is definitely gonna do it for this video. The Pro 3, I'm definitely a fan of. DSI or Dave Smith has uh, done done amazing work. He's a legend and he's made another awesome keyboard that I really enjoy. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to hit the like button and sub to the channel. Uh, like I said, leave us a comment. We always read them and thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. I'll see you next time for another video. Deuces.